January was not a good month in the world of DMV sports. But we still got to talk about it, so here it goes. I'm Evan from DMV Sports Zone, and I'm here to give you another update on all things DMV Sports. sports zone. Chased down by Beal in the corner for three, gets oh, fouled, wow. and hits. Welcome to DC. Welcome to DC. You know where you're at, the USA cap. You're taking a slightly, I'm taking a slightly. Now this time, we're going to start with the Washington Capitals. So for the Capitals, is as is the theme for the rest of this video, it wasn't a good month of January, but they at least ended it on a good note, beating Dallas 5-0 on Friday. The win concludes the Caps' month of January at 4-6-2, and, and for the season, they're 24-12-9. That's good for 57 points and fourth place in the Metropolitan Division. So if the season ended today, the Caps would play Carolina in the first round. But here's how the next month starts for Washington. For the Capitals, the month of February begins on Tuesday when they head to Pittsburgh to face the Penguins. The Pens come in at 27, 11, and 7. That's good for 61 points. And third place in the Metro, if the season ended today, they play New York in the playoffs. Pittsburgh is coming off a 4-3 loss against the Kings on Sunday, and they've lost three in a row. This is the third of four between the Capitals and the Penguins. The season series is tied at one game apiece after Pittsburgh beat Washington 4-2 in D.C. on December 10th. And for the Capitals, the final game before the All-Star break is Wednesday when they return home to host the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers are currently 22-16-2. That's good for 46 points and sixth place in the Pacific. So if the season ended today, they'd miss the playoffs. Edmonton is coming off a 7-2 win in Montreal on Saturday, and they've won four in a row. This is the first of two between the Capitals and the Oilers. In the 2019-20 season, Edmonton won their only meeting against Washington. And we go to the Washington Wizards. So the Wizards also had a rough month, and it was capped off by a 115-95 loss in Memphis on Saturday, as the month of January concludes for the Wizards with a record of 5-9. The loss dropped the team to 23-26, 11th place in the East, so if the season ended today, they'd missed both the playoffs and the play-in tournament. Here's how the month of February starts for Washington. For the Wizards, the month of February begins on Tuesday when they head to Milwaukee to face the Bucks. The Bucks come in at 31 and 21, the five seed in the East. So if the season ended today, they play Cleveland in the first round. Milwaukee's coming off a 136 to 100 loss against the Nuggets on Sunday, though. This is the second of three between the Wizards and the Bucks. Washington leads the season series one to nothing after beating Milwaukee 101 to 94 in DC on November 7th. On Wednesday, the Wizards conclude their road trip when they head to Philadelphia for a rubber match with the 76ers. The Sixers are currently 30-19, and 19, the three seed in the East, so if the season ended today, they'd play Brooklyn in the first round. Philadelphia is coming off a 103-101 win over the Kings on Saturday, and they've won four in a row. This is the last of three between the Wizards and the Sixers. Each side has won a game, with Washington winning the last installment, 117-98 in D.C. on January 17th. And for the Wizards, the week concludes on Saturday when they return home to host the Phoenix Suns. The Suns are currently 40-9, and nine, the one seed in the West, so if the season ended today, they play the second playing team. Phoenix is coming off a 115-110 to 110 win over the Spurs on Sunday, and they've won 10 in a row. This is the last of two between the Wizards and the Suns. Phoenix leads the season series one game to nothing after beating Washington 118-98 in Phoenix on December 16th. Up next, we transition to college basketball, and we start with the Maryland Terrapins. So for Maryland, it wasn't exactly the best week, and it ended with a sour taste in their mouth, a 68-55 loss to Indiana on Saturday to conclude the month at 3-6. This puts the Terrapins at 11-10, 3-7 in the Big Ten. That's good for 11th place. And as of the latest bracketology, Maryland is not in the field. So here's how the next month starts for the Terps. For Maryland, the month of February begins on Tuesday when they host the 13th-ranked Michigan State Spartans. Michigan State comes in at 16-4, 7-2 in the Big Ten. That's good for third place, and the latest bracketology has Michigan State as a three seed. The Spartans are coming off an 83-67 win over Michigan on Saturday. And this is the first of two between Maryland and Michigan State. And for Maryland, the week concludes on Sunday when they head to Columbus to face the 16th-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State is currently 13-5, 6-2 in the Big Ten. 
That's good for fifth place. And the latest bracketology has Ohio State as a five seed. The Buckeyes are coming off a heartbreaking 81-76 loss at number six Purdue on Sunday. And this is the first of two between Maryland and Ohio State. Up next, let's talk about the Virginia Cavaliers. So Virginia is the only team in this whole episode that actually had a winning record in the month of January. And even then, their month didn't exactly end the best way. A 69-65 loss at Notre Dame on Saturday to conclude the month at 5-4. This puts the Cavaliers at 12-9, 6-5 in the ACC. That's good for 7th place. And as of the latest bracketology, Virginia is not in the field. So here's the week ahead for the Wahoos. For Virginia, the month of February begins on Tuesday when they return home to host the Boston College Eagles. Boston College comes in at 9-11, 4-6 in the ACC. That's good for 10th place, and obviously, as of the latest bracketology, Boston College is not in the field. The Eagles are coming off a 69-56 win over Pitt on Sunday. This is the only meeting this season between Virginia and Boston College. And for Virginia, the week concludes on Saturday when they host the Miami Hurricanes. Miami is currently 16-5, 8-2 in the ACC. That's good for first place. And as of the latest bracketology, Miami is a 9 seed. The Hurricanes are coming off a 73-62 win at Georgia Tech on Saturday, and they've won two in a row. This is the first of two between Virginia and Miami. Up next, let's talk about the Virginia Tech Hokies. So Virginia Tech is the, uh, is the inverse of Virginia here. Virginia had a good overall month that ended on a bad note. Virginia Tech had a bad overall month that ended on a good note, an 85-72 win at Florida State on Saturday, to be precise. This concludes the month of January at 3-5 and, and puts the Hokies at 11-10, and 3-7 and seven in the ACC. That's good for 12th place. As of the latest bracketology, Virginia Tech is not in the field. So here's how the next month begins for the Hokies. For Virginia Tech, the month of February begins on Wednesday when they return home to host the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Georgia Tech comes in at 9-11, and 2-7 and in the ACC. That's good for last place. And obviously, as of the latest bracketology, Georgia Tech is not in the field. The Yellow Jackets are coming off the aforementioned 73-62 loss against Miami on Saturday. And this is the first of two between Virginia Tech and Georgia Tech. And for Virginia Tech, the week concludes on Saturday when they head to Pittsburgh to face the Pittsburgh Panthers. Pitt is currently 8-13, 3-7 in the ACC. That's good for 13th place. And obviously, as of the latest bracketology, Pitt is not in the field. The Panthers are coming off the aforementioned 69-56 loss at Boston College on Sunday, and this is the first of two between Virginia Tech and Pitt. All of the DMV teams had a bad month of, month of January, but none of them had it worse than the Georgetown Hoyas. So Georgetown capped the month off with a 56-53 loss at Butler on Saturday, bringing their total record for the month of January to, and you might want to sit down for this, 0-7. So this puts the Hoyas at 6-12, 0-7 in the Big East. That's good for last place. And obviously, as of the latest bracketology, Georgetown is nowhere near the field. And they've lost eight in a row. So here's the week ahead for the Hoyas. For Georgetown, the month of February begins on Tuesday when they return home to host the Seton Hall Pirates. Seton Hall comes in at 12-7, 3-6 in the Big East. That's good for ninth place. And the latest bracketology has Seton Hall as a nine seed. The Pirates are coming off a 73-63 loss against number 22 Marquette on Wednesday, and they've lost two in a row. This is the first of two between Georgetown and Seton Hall. On Thursday, Georgetown welcomes in the St. John's Red Storm. St. John's is currently 11-8, 3-5 in the Big East. That's good for eighth place. As of the latest bracketology, St. John's is not in the field. The Red Storm are coming off a 73-62 loss at number 14 Villanova on Saturday, this is the last of two between Georgetown and St. John's. The Red Storm took the first meeting 88-69 in Jamaica on January 16th. And for Georgetown, the week concludes on Sunday when they host the 15th-ranked Providence Friars. Providence is currently 18-2, 8-1 in the Big East. That's good for first place, and the latest bracketology has Providence as a four seed. The Friars are coming off a 65-63 win over number 22 Marquette on Sunday, and they've won five in a row. This is the last of two between Georgetown and Providence. The Friars took the first meeting 83-75 in Providence on January 20th. So as you've heard, the month of January was bad for DMV sports. Possibly the worst month ever. And you know how bad it was? The only team in D.C. that did not have a losing record was the football team, who went 1-1 one one in the month. But hey, as bad as January was... February has to be better, right? 
And in the month of February, we got a whole bunch of good content coming for you guys. So stay tuned to DMV Sports Zone. Until next time, I'm Evan signing off.